How we doing everyone? It's Living to Learn. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the support. Feels good to know that people are actually benefiting from these videos. Uh, they have takeaways, they have suggestions, and um, comments, ideas. Again, keep it coming. Likes, subscribe, share, comment, make suggestions on future videos. I'm open to it, right? Um, I can't say that I'll get to everybody's idea, but I love the feedback, even constructive criticism, right? Hey, you know, intro's a little too long, or you know what, can you give us a breakdown of what you're talking about? It's kind of hard to follow along. No big deal. You know, I, I, I can I can work with what I can work with. You know, at the end of the day, I got to show up and, do, and make this content, and it's got to be something that people are going to want to watch. And so those of you that are, that are watching, those of you that have watched, that have been supporting, I just want to say thank you. And uh, if you'll notice, that's kind of the theme with how I like to start my videos off, right? And I'll tell you why. It's because it's something I don't ever want to forget. You know, let's say this channel blows up one of these days. Let's say I'm up and, you know, I've got thousands of subscribers and everyone knows my videos. Not saying it'll happen, but what if it does, right? I don't ever want to forget this time. I don't ever want to forget what it was like in the beginning. And that there was a group of individuals, there was people, family, friends, uh, co-workers, some people I don't even know, I've never met in person before, that were supporting me and pushing me to to get better. And so um, I just want to say thanks. And uh, today we're, we're going to be closing up with phase six of the change cycle. We've been going through the change cycle um, and I'll give a recap of what that is before I start. Um, I mean, once I start, but before I get going, I need to... Uh, I need to acknowledge a, a, a couple of things. So first of all, um, I just lost my Uncle Julian. Uh, Uncle Julie was a, an amazing man. Uh, if you what, what I remember from him is just his six five cut, um, former professional athlete with you know a smile that could light up the room, personality for days, and just a just an incredible human being to be around and so I was so fortunate to be related to him and have him in my family for all these years so Uncle Jewel you'll be missed man and um, you know rest uh, rest in paradise secondly I want to acknowledge my my mom and dad you know and I've, I've mentioned some things on my videos before about how fortunate I feel uh, regarding the family I was raised uh, raised by and regarding how I grew up how I was raised um, it's not something that everyone gets to experience and it took me a long time to realize just how much of a gift that has been and so in particular um, mom and dad I know you're gonna be watching this I just want to say thank you because you've been you've always you've always been supportive you've always been there but in these recent times your help your support has been critical and it's come through and so um, I don't need to get into specifics. You know what I'm referring to. And I just want to say thank you. And I love you. I appreciate you. And um, I don't take you for granted. So now that I've gotten that, um, those are things I had, to, I had to do today. And so I, I apologize for those of you that don't necessarily like a, a long intro. But it's going to be like that sometimes, right? Um, there's just some things I can't, I can't go forward with without acknowledging you know it's at certain times but the change so the change cycle what, what have we been discussing thus far right so we know there's six phases of the change cycle the first one is discontentment okay and again you can go back to my videos and, and it pretty much goes along in this order discontentment what does that mean well I it's the opposite of being content right I'm not content I'm not happy with a situation relationship job whatever it might be um, and then from what once we reach that discontentment we take that you know that's that first phase in this in the cycle the second one is a um, a breakthrough I mean I'm sorry a breaking point not a breakthrough breakthrough is good breaking point um, is also good depending on what we do with it right so breaking point we're you know that thing whatever it may be that we are discontent with that we have you know arrived at discontentment with we are saying you know what i've hit a breaking point meaning like hey I, i'm not going to do this anymore i'm i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired right and i'm sure you can understand what i'm talking about many of us have been there many of us are there and so i'm sure you can relate after that 
comes the third phase, which is the decision. Almost immediately after you hit that breaking point, you've made a decision. Hey, I'm, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I am, I have decided I'm going to do something about it. Good for us, right? Good for you. Good for me. That's what we want to do. You know, the only, the only way things change is if we change, right? We want to stay the same. We want things to change. That's called insanity. It, it's just, it's, it's not going to happen. So we make a decision, man, I'm, I'm doing it different. Whatever it may be. Now, almost immediately as you make that decision, maybe not right away, but soon to come, is the fear. We talked about how this happens. It's, it's a natural reaction in our brain. Our brain has a, a, an area that is in charge of self-preservation. Basically, it's, it's, it's assessing this change, this decision to change as a threat against your safety. It's really funny how, how it works like that. And, you know, I think I mentioned before, a lot of us, when we get stuck, because we get caught up in that, in the fear phase, right? We get, that's where we get stuck. That's where we start to decide, is this really what I want to do or not? And I think what helps me prepare for that or, or to be ready for that is knowing that it's going to happen. Just expecting that, hey, if, I just, if I'm going to decide to do something different, the fear is coming. I got to be ready, right? And then after that fear... After that fear comes amnesia. And that's what we talked about last week. Amnesia. What is amnesia? Amnesia means you you all of a sudden you forgot. All of a sudden you forgot what it felt like at the breaking point. And the fear of change begins to outweigh the feeling that you had of being discontent, of wanting to do something different, of knowing you need to do something different. And now it's taking you to our la the last phase of the cycle, which we're talking about today, which is called backtracking. You start to backtrack. You start to say, you know what, uh, actually, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not that bad after all. You know, I did, I do really want to change. I do want to do something different, but... Maybe it's just not worth it. It's not worth the effort. I want to share a story with you. When I got into sales, my first sales job was in tech, right? I got into tech sales. Um, I had previously come from transportation industry, route driving, delivery driving. That was the majority of my experience. I'd gone to college. I'd earned a degree, uh, two degrees actually by that time. And I was planning to do something different, right? I knew I wanted out of my of the former industry, but I just I didn't know what to do. Um, and then you know my my brother, who was having a lot of success selling in uh, for the tech company that he was with, was encouraging me to to look into it. Like, hey, you know, you you've got the personality, you've got the, the skill set to do very well in sales. Why don't you look into it? So I, I, I took the steps and anyway, fast forward, I, I, I got a, they gave me a shot, right? Got hired as a sales development rep. So my job was going to be calling prospects and trying to get them to make an appointment with one of our account executives who would then, um, you know, assess their needs and see if we could, uh, we could help them with our product, right? So that was my job, making appointments. So I had a set quota, I had a set goal that I needed to hit. And so, you know, I had a great time in training, right? I worked for a great company, uh, a lot of great resources. Um, all my coworkers were great. You know, it was, it was cool. It was a different environment. You know, it was different than the loading dock. It was different than the, you know, the, the noise and grind of, of transportation, which I loved as well. You know, I'm a people person, so I, I like, I love the uh, camaraderie, right? Between guys, like, you know, working with dudes and, you know, saying, what's up? Hey, hey, what's good? Hey, what's going on? You know, like that, that's me. Like, I just, I love that part, right? And I still have friends from, from that I work with in those, from those, uh, industry, from that industry. But, you know, I want to do something different. So here I was, you know, got through training. I got on the phones. And if you've never cold called before in your life, it's pretty, it's an experience, right? And um, you, uh, you come across some, some interesting people who uh, do not want to be bothered understandable right I mean I'm I'm calling people while they're at work 
right? Like one of my best friends uh, has his own tile business and I've worked with him, you know, many times. I don't know how much of a help I was to him. Maybe I just stood, got in the way, but, you know, he was nice enough to, to, to not fire me on the first day. And anyway, you know, we're, you know, tile, it gets, it's dirty, right? It's muddy. You got, you've got a, a, a trawl in one hand. You've got a, you've got a, um, a level in one hand, you know, my buddy's out there working. He's got the knee pads on. He's putting the wall up and, you know, can you imagine someone like me just calling you out of nowhere, right? So I'm calling, you know, I'm calling professionals and my first month was rough. It was rough. I didn't hit goal. I came up short. Um, um, I was struggling. I was struggling to find my to find my rhythm. You know, I had the script down. I was trying to take notes, trying to get advice. And I remember the last day. I remember the last day before the month ended. I needed six appointments to hit goal. I remember. And that was a stretch because they wanted you to average two to three. And two to three was, was, was solid. If you got two appointments, if you got three appointments that day, you had a great day. Um, we used to have contests all the time. Like, hey, if you hit two appointments, you can go home early. Like that, that's, that was valuable. But I needed six, which was a long shot. But I was like, you know what? I, there's nothing else to do, right? So I got on there. I started dialing. I, w I had no luck. I was, get I was getting nothing. But right behind me, <laughs> right behind me, was a was somebody who was brand new this was her i want to say i don't know if it was her first day or, or her first week on the phones she just started guess how many appointments she got she got six this is the number i needed right like and she hadn't even started for the full month yet so her goal wasn't the same but she hit she got six appointments that day i don't think i i don't think i got any on the calendar so i came up short you know and and when you're in situations like that it, it's very uh it can feel very defeating right you can feel defeated and you start to think you know i, I would start to think on those days on those hard days you know what maybe i should just go back to what I know how to do. Maybe this is maybe this isn't for me. I, I'm not I'm not having the success I thought I would. I don't know what I'm saying that's not working. I don't know what I'm not doing that I should be doing. You know, I'm looking at all these other people around me, they seem to be cat they seem to be getting it. They seem to be catching on. They seem to be successful. They seem to be good at this. And I don't know that I am. And, you know, you start to have those thoughts. And this is what happens when we set out to do something different. Right? Because I could remember the day sitting in my truck, taking a lunch, and looking around and thinking, man, like, you know, I used, I used to be, you know, I used to, uh, one of my, on one of my routes, I used to deliver to a business park. And, you know, you see, you're seeing all these professionals, people well-dressed and, walking around and I remember I remember I'd be sitting there you know and and eating my lunch and just thinking like what did what do they have that I don't have why can't I get in those doors why can't I be that person you know and I don't know I didn't know anything about them you know and I, maybe I was assuming that hey they they were all you know these educated well you know professional people maybe they weren't but it, it you know, I, I was like, why is there a disconnect? Why, why can't I see myself? Why can't I ever find myself in these type of circles? Is this all there is for me? Now, fast forward, I get my shot to work in one of those buildings, right? And now I'm thinking maybe it would be better to go back to before. You see how this works? Like, I forgot what it felt like those times when I was sitting there taking lunch, looking at all these people who seemed to be doing better than me, who seemed to have a better opportunity than the one I had in front of me. I forgot. And so I, I thought of, I started backtracking. I started thinking maybe I should just go backward. At least I know what that's like. This is what happens to us. This is why you see people in ridiculous situations, terrible relationships, and you're like, what are they What are they doing? Why would you subject yourself to that? Because you know it. 
I mentioned this a while back. Comfort. Being comfortable. It's so addicting. It's addicting. Because when you try to do something different, look what comes with the territory. And I'll have you know, I didn't go back. I, I didn't go back. You know what I did? I realized that if I was going to have success, if I was going to do good at this, I better do something different. Because whatever I was doing before didn't work. That's what you should do. That's what we should do. Instead of backtracking, instead of going back to the, to, to the, to the back of the line and going back again and back again and back again, that's, that's what a cycle is. It's never ending. The chain cycle will never end until we actually do something about it, until we do something different. Do you realize that? Do I realize that? If I can be honest with you, let me, let me be honest with you. There are things in my life where I'm stuck in the chain cycle. I'm going to be honest. I told you this, that's what I am on this channel. I'm going to be real. Oh, you know, I, I meditate four hours a day. I read six books, you know, a week. And no, nah, you're not going to get that from me. If you can do that, I am impressed. Seriously. And there are, hey, I've mentioned this before. There are some incredible people out there. I'm not taking away from anybody. There are some people that do things. You're just like, man, you, you got to have superpowers. You've got to have magic or something, man. Because how do you do this? I'll acknowledge that. There's some impressive people out there. And maybe there's some things that I do that are impressive. There's things that you do that are probably impressive. Right? But like I said, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be transparent. There are things in my life right now where I am stuck in the chain cycle. Where I decide, hey, I want to do it different, and then all of a sudden, before the day's over, I'm backtracking. Like, ah, hey, you know what? Maybe not. I'm human just like you, but I'm, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to explain here is that it is possible to break this cycle. Because even though I have things in my life right now where I'm stuck in that cycle, there are other areas of my life where I, where I am no longer in that. I've broken that. That's what I want to emphasize. It's possible. We can do this. I stuck it out. My second month as a sales development rep, I killed it. 150% to gold three months straight. And I earned, I was the first in my hiring class to achieve early promotion. And what, why am I saying this? To give myself a pat on the back? No, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I'm proud of myself because, hey, it was hard. It's tough. It's hard. It's hard to believe in yourself when you're not doing good. I'm proud of myself because I didn't backtrack. I didn't go backward. But I couldn't keep doing the same thing if I wanted to move forward. So we, we've got to hit a point. There's got to hit a point where we decide, hey, you know what? I, <laughs> I don't want to go back. But if I'm going to keep going forward, I got to do something different. And I've said this before. I'm not here to judge you either. How could I? Because even though I've had I had success that time, doesn't mean I'm always successful. Doesn't mean it's not going to take maybe a hundred times more to snap out of the chain cycle in this area of my life or with this part. So if you find yourself continually going back and forth, round and circle, guess what? You're not alone. And I want to emphasize this too. There's nothing wrong with you. But the fact is this. We can't, we can't break the cycle until we just decide, you know what? I'm going to do something different and I'm going to stick to it. Now what I did, right, after that first month that I came up short, I started to really pay attention to the coworkers around me. What were they saying on the phone? What were the what were the what were the um, what were my top the top performers in my group? What were they saying? How were they introing introing their call? How were they explaining the process? How were they setting up the appointment? And I started to listen. And I started to take notes, and I started to uh, I started to incorporate those things that were working for them into the way that I did it. So that's what we got to do. It's not, you're not alone. This is, use 
living to learn as a resource if it's helpful read the books watch the videos not just mine other people's look up the stories hey who's done this before like find resources find mentors find something that's going to give you a clue to do something different you you have remember i've said this before you have to have evidence that you're a person that can make a, a change you're a person that can go in a different direction so be, so create these opportunities to have small victories take that fear by surprise you know what i'm going to do something different but you know what so that my mind doesn't just set off all the alarms right at once right like act like you're i don't know if you guys remember that old school mission impossible I mean, there's a real old school one, but the one I'm referring to is the one with Tom Cruise, which is is old school to most people these days. But there's a part where he's like sneaking into this room, and it's like super sensitive, right? You can't even not you can't even like he can't sweat. I think like a bead of sweat falls from his from his face, and that's how the alarm goes off, right? But it's like it's so sensitive, like the change in temperature, anything will set it off. That's kind of how we gotta we gotta approach that fear the fear phase right of the change cycle we got to approach it like that where we're just like okay i know my mind's going to tell me to be afraid of this change so i've got i've got to move slowly i've got to set up little things to to get over i've got to i've got to create opportunities for myself to to gain these little wins these victories because they're really not little they're really not little they might be subtle they might be easier they might be just you know you're taking small chunks at a time right I heard this one recently. How do you eat an elephant? One piece at a time. Don't literally eat one, but you see what I'm saying? Like, how do you take something? How do you take on something that's just so much bigger than you can even fathom that you're like, I don't, I don't even know how I'm gonna do this. One step at a time. We've got to, we've got to be strategic because there is a way. And it is possible. And I mean it's possible for you because it was possible for me. And there's really no difference. Maybe there's some things I can do better than you can. There's definitely, there's arguably going to be things you can do better than me. So what's the difference? Or what, just because I'm here on YouTube? You think I, I'm like, I've got some kind of advantage? I'm human. <laughs> I'm human. You hear that fan back there? I'm hot. Right? I get hot. I get uncomfortable. I get stressed. I get I get down. I get you know whatever. The whole season, the all the whole full range of emotions and feelings. I got them all. If I can do it, if I could, if I could, and and here's the thing for me. I look back at that as I tell that story. I look back at that time in my life, and I've got to remember that. Hey, Josh, if you did it then, you could do it again. So I'm hoping that this was encouraging to you. And again, like, share, subscribe. If you want to donate, that's always appreciated. Helps me continue to make this content. And um, thank you so much for watching. We'll uh, uh, we'll be seeing each other again soon.